Looking for some advice on how to DJ a party? Well, I've got five tips to share with you today. Click the like button and subscribe the channel. Okay, let's get stuck in. Tip number one, ask for ideas before the party has even started. So one of the tricks that I use is I send uh, DJ mixes to my friends or whoever is hosting the party and then see if they like them. And what you'd be able to do from there is like get some ideas of the styles that they're after. And if you haven't actually done a mix in the style and it might be a bit more of an open format type set, then just get them to send you a Spotify playlist or some ideas on email, for example, or even WhatsApp them over. And then you'll get a flavor for what the style might be. And the benefit of this is that you'll mitigate any requests on the night or, the, or during the event uh, which could be quite annoying for some DJs out there. But yeah, that's, they're my main tips for that. Tip number two is set up beforehand. So any gig that you're going to, especially if it's just like a, a dedicated party, like a garden party in the summer, for example, or a house party in the winter, maybe inside. So my tip is to you is to get there early, get a good setup going, and then when everyone starts getting there, you'll be super relaxed. You won't, you won't need to rush to get set up. You can play whenever the host or the, the event organizer wants you to actually start DJing. So it's really good way of reducing the pressure uh, and it builds up a bit more confidence for yourself. Uh, a bit of a ninja tip for you on that though. From experience, I've found that you need to find a good place to set up to allow for people to dance or or just enjoy the ambiance or the, 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 the setting that you're, or the vibe that you're trying to create. So that's really important. So if you're tucked away in the corner and there's not really any space for anyone to DJ or it may be the, the corner that you're tucked away in, may be the space that people want to have a break and just chill, have a chat. So you've got to think about these things. Where, where do you envisage people having a, a boogie on the dance floor? Where is the sound going to uh, be blasted? In, is it in the right direction? So summarize these things and then agree with the event host and then you'll be golden. Tip number three, protect your gear. Uh, protecting your gear is really important, especially if you're doing an outdoor gig. You don't know what the summer's gonna be like in the UK and do you know what? It could be like that anywhere in the world. So it could rain or it could be really hot. It could be too hot in fact. So just a simple tip, try and get some cover above your head, whether it be an umbrella or a gazebo, for example, but you may be in a tent, so you, should, you could actually be grand. If, if you're getting too close to the dance floor, make, sh make sure you get a bit more space so then people aren't like spilling drinks all over your gear. And I think that's really important as well is to think about the, the cables and where the, those cables are going. So you don't want anyone tripping up, pulling out the cables <laughs> and the music stops. So yeah, there's a few things to think about when protecting your, your DJ gear as well. Tip number four, don't have an ego. Don't turn up to the party <laughs> and be like, yep, yeah, I'm the man, I'm the DJ. I'm gonna DJ all of the tunes that I like and not what anyone else likes. So unless you know that the audience that's coming to the party really enjoys you for doing your thing, which could be quite rare to be fair. <laughs> but what, what you need to do is just relax, be open-minded, maybe take some requests, like I said earlier, and just go with the flow and read the crowd. I mean, that is like golden rule for DJing. Read the crowd, see who's boogieing. And you know what? If not everyone's boogieing all the time, it's a, it's a party. Like, let people chat, enjoy the background music, get into the vibe. Later on, they might get a bit more Dutch courage, maybe a few drinks down them. So, and then they'll start uh, dancing. So then, then you can sort of taper it from there and read the crowd. Uh, switch up the tracks, see what's going on. Tip number five, checklist of your equipment. So what you need to do is make sure you've got a checklist of your equipment. And at the end of the set, you've, you tick off everything that you've you've brought to the, the event itself. Because I know for a fact, sometimes for me, I've been in a rush and I've just absolutely 
wanted to get out there as quick as possible because it's late. Um, some other DJs might have been using your, your equipment as well, so it, it depends how kind you are, you know? It's, it's good in life to be kind. But yeah, they may be using your DJ stuff and it's just like little things like the, the, adapt, the adapters, making sure you've got the adapters, you've got your headphones. Like I know so many DJs have just forgotten their headphones just because they've been in a rush and they've just let, let the other DJs use them as well. So yeah, expensive equipment uh, or expensive mistakes to make if you leave your equipment, especially if it's, if it's not uh, an event nearby where you live. So yeah, like I said earlier, subscribe to the channel, uh, click the like button, go to beatmatchguru.com, check out lots of DJing tips and tricks and we'll see you next time.